Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey, Kevin. I'm Ralph behind the camera. And here we are. We've got a beautiful late autumn day uh, in November. It's sunny, and we're going to have a dinner party tonight. We're going to a uh, friend's house, and I was asked to bring city chicken. Now, city chicken is something that, depending on where you are, you may not have ever heard of it or have ever had it. It's pretty but Midwestern, it's right? It's very Midwestern, uh, old industrial areas like Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Chicago. These kinds of places, city chicken is something that um, its history was that in the Depression and even before the Depression, this was something that was used instead of chicken because chicken was raised on farms way outside the city and so harder to get to people use scraps of meat and put them together to sort of form a fake drumstick, drumstick. like on a skewer exactly but um, now, nowadays it's used uh, like with different more higher-end meats well yeah and actually Polish people sort of adopted this dish too as theirs you go into a lot of Polish restaurants here in Detroit, city chicken is usually on the menu. Sometimes they use a combination of pork and veal, um, but we always use just pork. So that's what we're doing today. Our city chicken is just pork. Um, I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. I gotta make a little egg wash. So I got three eggs here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water and we're gonna make an egg wash. But let me just whisk these together here. In the background, we're hearing music of Johnny Desmond, who was actually born in Detroit, and um, in the month of November. Wow, yeah. well, that's wonderful. We like Johnny Desmond. He never really was a huge star, but he did he made a lot of records. So nice is the name of this record. So nice. Well, we're hoping our city chicken is going to be so nice. So here it is, Ralph. Here's the city chicken. Now, what is it exactly? These. This is pork. All right, so check this out. These are cubes of pork on a skewer. You see this? Oh, so you can buy it already done like that if you go yes. to other places? A butcher, here in Detroit, butchers regularly will make these up. Um, now, if you don't have, if you don't ever see city chicken in your butcher's case, you can either ask him to make it up or you can make it yourself if you get cubes of stewing pork okay mm -hmm. and put them together on a skewer like this so that's the first step right so here's our city chicken now what we're going to do is we're going to take our pork we're going to give it a little roll in this egg wash then we're going to dredge it in seasoned flour now you can make your own if you like uh, if you want to use flour and add some salt and pepper to it and season it up i like to use a pre-mixed flour um, and I'm using frying magic which I really like I think it has a wonderful flavor and your mom used to use that she always used frying magic for her city chicken and I do the same so we got 18 of these suckers because it's gonna be a big crowd tonight all men and I know they're gonna eat good so manly appetites again here's our city chicken which has no chicken in it by the way okay this is pork on skewers I'm going to continue my little routine here. We give it a roll in the egg wash. We give it a roll in our seasoned flour. I'm going to do it 15 more times. Yeah, and then I'm just setting it on the plate because the next step after this is to get them browned up. So this is step one. We'll be right back with that at Cavalcade of Food. Blogspot.com for more information. So we have all of our city chickens breaded up here. You got them all done? All done, all 18. So you've got the breading on them, uh, the flour I should say. And what I've done is I've got a skillet on the stove. An electric skillet also works beautifully here if you want to use an electric skillet. But um, I've got some canola oil in here or you can use vegetable oil. I'm just dropping a few little flour crumbs in there to see if the oil's ready and it is. By uh, the fact that it's sizzling? Yes. So you see how it's starting to sizzle around the sides? Around see those, the edges yeah. There? yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to brown these up. Now when they're in there, do you have a chance to turn them or do they... We're going to turn them. Okay, so... We're going to brown, you know, both sides. You probably only do like maybe... Maybe eight. Eight at a time. And we don't want to overcrowd the pan. 
Um, oh, that's probably key. I'm glad you mentioned that because I would probably just jam them all in there. Yeah. So you, you want to give them a little bit of room. Seven. Anyway, so we'll do this in batches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brown these, and then what we'll do is once they're brown, I'm going to put them in this roaster pan. I've preheated the oven to 300 degrees. So these get browned, breaded, browned, baked. Okay? City so chicken. Once we um, get them browned and get them in the roaster pan, we're going to put a little Polish gravy in there too. Ooh, so that's another step that we'll have right. to learn about. Great. Yeah. We're making city chicken here on Cavalcade of Food and listening to and celebrating the birthday of Detroit's own Johnny Desmond. Well, he was born here anyway. And his music is also of the same era as uh, the origins of city chicken. So we'll be right back. So we're almost done with our city chicken being browned here. You see how they came out, Ralph? They look delicious. They smell good. And you're down to the last four or five. Mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And you're going to continue to put them in this big uh, roaster. Roaster. That's the next step. Right. And while this last batch is browning, I'm putting together the Polish gravy. This is a little joke with our friend Adrian, who was asking me my city chicken recipe. And I said, you know, you brown the city chicken, then you got to put the Polish gravy over it. And she says, what's Polish gravy? Oh, Andy Warhol would be so proud. So, Polish gravy, um, this is really cream of mushroom soup. Again, you doctor we're not food snobs here. This is um, something that we use for gravy for our city chicken. And all I'm doing is, I'm just bringing it up and warming it a little bit. I'm not you know, even bringing it up to a full cook because it's not necessary. But, okay, these are, these are done. See, look how beautiful. So we're gonna take- Tell me this one, I didn't get the last one. Oh yeah. By the way, Ralph and I have discovered these ceramic coated nonstick skillets. They are awesome. wonderful. And they don't have any of those awful chemicals that like release, the, yeah, the, we really the, um, love these. Like the Teflon. Yeah, the ceramic is the way to go if you can uh, find the right size for your needs. And yep. I was always burning my eggs and chilaquiles and things like that, but not anymore, not in this thing. So here's, here's what I've got. You'll notice this is on the thick side. It's just coming up to temperature now. Two cans of cream of mushroom soup plus one half can of water. Okay? That's it? That's it. Because we want it thick. All right? I don't... We don't want it like soup. We want it like gravy. Do right. you see? So you see how nice and thick that is? So, but it does create its own unique... Uh, the, the pork is going to release some, some juice, juices. okay? Oh, and it's going to add to this. I was going to say, so, I've had it for so long, but I've never realized that that's all it was, was because it really comes out to be so much more when you... Uh, mix it with the pork as you said after because it's going to be cooking for hours in there. Right. We're going to cook it for two hours at 300 degrees. So so this isn't a lot compared to what you have been known for in the past which is doing uh, these big church dinners where how many do you make for those? Oh, I'll do 500 city chickens for a church dinner. Wow. So doing 18 is no big deal. So, okay, so our Polish gravy is in. Now, here's one extra ingredient that if you live in an area where there's a Polish market, you might be able to you'll be able to find this. If not, you can use beef bouillon. But now this is in Polish. This is mushroom bouillon. Okay. Oh. So these are mushroom bouillon cubes, and if you smell often. Ralph, mm. they've got a really deep mushroomy flavor. So I'm going to take two of these, and you know what? This is not a common item. You get them at the Polish markets, but if you can't get mushroom bouillon, like I said, you know what? Just just um, break up a couple of beef bouillon cubes, uh -huh. and you put those in there. So you're this just is gonna, crumbling it up into the into the mushroom yep. soup, and these will dissolve between the you know with the heat and the. Um, uh, moisture that's going to be created oh, okay. inside the pan. To, to add to that gravy. See, right. I knew that it was more than just mushroom soup. You're so so this this really gives, and this was my mom's trick, this this really gives it just a ramped up flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two mushroom or beef bouillon cubes. 
to complete now, the picture. What I'm going to also do is I'm going to put the lid on the roaster, but before I do that, I'm going to cover it with foil. Kevin's not used to my kitchen. Yeah, that's all right. I kind of know where things are. And when you make this for the church and you make as many as 500, each one tastes, you know, like a small batch. He's got this way of doing it with his family and, and the volunteers at the church where uh, it amazes me and, and everyone at the dinner that he can make that much food and each one tastes like it was, you know, made especially for them because uh, you have a, it, it takes a knack, I think, to make that many. And it's a big hit when you do your city chicken, isn't it? Well, people really like it because it's something Sells that out. people don't, don't, don't do at home. And I put the foil on just because I want I really want to keep that moisture in. Okay, I want a nice tight seal. So we're going to just put this in for a couple hours at 300. And that's all there is to that. Okay, so we got our city chicken in the oven. Time for me to clean up and put Ralph's kitchen back in order. And we'll come back in a couple hours. I wouldn't notice. But that's tender. Okay. 300 degrees for a couple hours. And again, that's going to, you could even do it at 250 degrees for like Longer. two and a half hours if you want. But those, that stewing pork, those chunks of meat need to be really tenderized and the best way to do that is to cook it for a longer period of time at a little bit of a lower heat. That's what we're doing. So we've got city chicken in the oven. Alright everybody, here we are, a couple hours later. Moment of truth. And, oh, I'll tell you what, it smells good. It smells great. So, take our roaster out here. I can't believe that uh, we haven't filmed you making city chicken before. That's like one of the signature Kevin P. dishes. Yeah, it is. And I guess, you know, for whatever reason, i peel this back carefully because it's going to let out some steam here. Oh. Look at that. Can you see how the mushroom soup has created a nice gravy right. all its own? Right, see that wonderful gravy? That's exactly what we want. It's very liquidy. I mean, in a good way. It's not um, the way it looked when it went in. Yeah. Look how browned those those delicious kebabs are. You know, that's the other thing that uh, city chicken is like a, an American kebab. Yeah, it's it really also known is. as mock chicken. Um, we sure had fun making this one. We sure did. And again, city chicken. It's a wonderful, wonderful dish. Um, easy to make, but. Uh, the flavor it has is so deep and so wonderful. It's really something unique. So you might remember having city chicken years ago. Maybe you've never heard of it. You know what? Turn your friends and your family onto something brand new with this dish. A new kind of comfort food. Absolutely. So city chicken on Cavalcade. We cannot wait to dig in with our friends tonight at our dinner party. Thanks so much for being a part of this one. Thank you, Johnny Desmond, wherever you are. Yes. And um, we had a great time. Hope you did too. See you next time.